you, you are the best Australian player this country has produced. And that's the stats back it up. I know you're not comfortable with that. A young girl growing up in Albury, which is fitting that we're in a regional centre tonight, that you would achieve this legend status and respect in the game? Oh, absolutely not. Um, I'm a country girl, um, country regional New South Wales, so I mean, I don't think a lot of people that sort of knew me growing up could have thought that this, you know, was in my future, so I'm really appreciative that I, I definitely had, um, I, I had a lot of luck in my career. I. Um, was very fortunate. I was put in great situations with great teammates, and I always had great people around me, and also you know my family. So I, I've always had a lot of support. So speaking of your family, um, obviously your mother, your father entrenched in basketball themselves. How crucial? And I believe there was a letter when you, you were really young that actually played a, a bit of a crucial role in maybe a turning point in, in your career where basketball may not have been the path for Lauren Jackson. Um. Yeah, I was a bit soft, I think, as a kid, for sure. And uh, my mum definitely didn't like that because she might be the toughest human being that ever. <laughs> Anyone who played against her would know. Um, but yeah, when I was younger, I think, and it wasn't so much that, um, you know, I it wasn't destined for basketball or anything. It was more that I let them down or disappointed them and disappointed my teammates. So I think that was a real learning curve for me when I was 12. Um, and that's what happens when you come from incredible basketball background. They, you know, mum and dad didn't really say too much, but when I, you know, let them down like that, um, I, I knew about it. So I think, you know, I learned early on that I had to be, you know, a little bit tougher. <laughs> Women's basketball at a, is it now at a stage where they're being paid. Um, yourself, um, Michelle Timms, they went through periods where you had to really fight for the standards of what we're seeing now. Um, how proud are you to see where basketball for women and basketball in general is at and how far do we have to go? Well, you know, I think uh, this year has been incredible for basketball in Australia. I think the, the games that the Boomers played in Melbourne, you know, in front of 100,000 people, it just it was incredible. So, you know, when, when men's basketball is, is doing that well, women's basketball can only, you know, we can only get better as well. But I think, you know, we have a long way to go. I think um, as Bobby said before, we, you know, we've got a wonderful league. We've got incredible talent. Our league is just going from strength to strength. And now we've just got to, you know, make sure we get that visibility and, and take it to a place where it's sustainable and clubs are getting the support that they need to thrive. And, you know, hopefully I, you know, have the opportunity to help do that so obviously there's so many people that have helped your family but is, is there a coach that stands out for you they play such a crucial role oh there's many um look i think actually there's one coach in here eric kibby where are you eric where are, there you are mate okay good job so eric i think was one of the kindest coaches to me early on um in new south wales basketball and i think he definitely um helped me like in in that pathway you know, I think the pathways are the most important things and, and for me, my role now at Basketball Australia, um, we definitely want to get back to grassroots and develop those pathways because we are we are a very unique sport in the sense that even if you're not going to go to high performance, you can still go and get educations and play all over the world. AFLW can't do that. Cricket can't do that. We can do that. You know, it's we're so lucky. So I think um, having coaches like you in these pathways give athletes like me hope um, and also drive we want to be great for you guys so yeah I think yeah there's a, there's been a lot of coaches but mum was one of them to do it I'm not just saying that you're sitting here mum but I love you yeah you obviously cracked the WNBA and as I mentioned before more women have played in the WA than men in the NBA how hard is that environment the travel and people we don't realize that behind the scenes with with injuries it's it's not all the glitz and glamour of the the lights and the big show. No, I know. I mean, I think a lot of people know my story in terms of injuries and things like that. So, you know, it definitely is an all glitz and glamour, especially for female athletes. But, um, you know, I was I was so fortunate and privileged to be in the situation I was. And I think the more that I'm moving into administration and following the footsteps of the great Lorraine Landon and um, you know Maria, like people, the women that are really paving the way for women's basketball. As I'm so fortunate to have you as a role model as well, so thank you. But um, 
I realise now how much I actually really love the sport. I don't think as an athlete I really appreciated how much passion I have for the sport until I moved into this role, so. It's terrific. Um, the Ovals, you had so much success. Is there a standout moment? Um, is it the gold medal, as was mentioned? That seems like an obvious one, but from your point of view, what what made that team so great? Like, that's different to any other team that you've played? Uh, that team was so special um, because we had just great camaraderie, great chemistry. Um, you know, obviously, Shelley earlier talked about Tom Maher and, and the things that he brought to the Opals program, and I think a lot of that still was translated in that 2016 with Jenny with 2016, yeah, with uh, Jenny Whittle and who else was in that squad? Uh, Christy Harrell, of course. She was unbelievable. Penny Taylor, MVP. You know, she was incredible. Um, we just had great players, and I think the great thing about the Opals is we've always sort of been the underdog to America, and um, we, you know, we've always fought to, we've always punched above our weight. Like right from when I was watching the Opals play when I was a kid, we've always fought harder and done it, done the dirty work, you know, and we really, you know, we did, and it was it was fun to be a part of. As you mentioned, you're part of. Basketball Australia, but also what's your thoughts on basketball New South Wales and, and the work that they are doing, particularly in, in regional areas? Well, it's great. Um, basketball New South Wales has always put a lot in regional areas, and I think now at the moment it's just growing, it's getting bigger. And like Bob said, you know, with Maria at the helm, and you know, I know Trippy has been around basketball for so long, and people that are just so passionate about seeing us go further um, than ever before and become the premier sport in Australia which it's going to take a lot, but we've got the right people, we've got the right resources, we've got the right product. So I think Basketball New South Wales is doing a fantastic job of supporting that. And um, I, there's no greater testament than being in this room right now and some of the faces and the people that are here um, pushing the sport and driving it. So it's, it's awesome. Beautiful. And finally, um, you've probably got a lot of people to thank, but I'll give you that opportunity. <laughs> Um, yeah, like I, I mean, there's a million people to thank, but I always sort of come down to my, my parents, you know, my mum obviously, we all know she's been my hero and everything, um, but I don't really talk about my dad too much, but he's just, he's a legend, he's my legend, and he's my hero, so I'm just really fortunate to have the parents that I have. My non-playing brother. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many times he's had to sit through functions like this and miss birthdays because I've been um, flag bearing and things like that. And mom and dad have been overseas watching me. But he, um, again, the two men in my life have been my quiet, beautiful supporters that, um, you know, they don't get a lot of credit. But I'm just really proud that today I get to share this with them. So, yeah, my boys and my boys on level five as well, who we are in bed asleep, so <laughs> yes. Well, congratulations on a fantastic career and, and what you, your, your legacy that you're continuing post-career as well, making a difference in the game. Congratulations. Thank you.